Welcome to Run It Back, the home of your 15th ranked UConn men's basketball team. How good does that feel? Feels good. Uh, last time they were ranked this high, December 2013, and a couple months later, something good happened. So I'm feeling great. Good vibes all around. Something very, very good happened this year. I'm Noam Watt. He's Jacob Sondek. Today, we'll talk about those 15th ranked Huskies. We'll talk about a team riddled with injuries, but still winning. We'll talk about the last two games. One, not so pretty. The other, a bit prettier. Then we'll talk about our weekly MVP, as always, and the week ahead when the cupcakes are no longer in the picture. So let's start with the 15th ranked team in the country. Eight and one, 13th in the initial net rankings. That's like the number one metric used come Selection Sunday. And they're one of three Big East teams ranked in the top 25. Number six, Villanova, UConn at number 15, and number 23, Seton Hall. Your initial reactions to this week's AP poll. So I think it's interesting I, in, in terms of non-UConn related content for the rankings. Seeing Purdue at number one is kind of kind of crazy. I mean, Duke did not last long at number one. And I feel like that happens a lot in college basketball, especially in the early going, and especially with conference play starting. So that's why it's so important for UConn. The almost loss to Maryland Eastern Shore, which we're going to talk about shortly, it is still a win. And it's so hard to it's so hard to like have that perspective. But you look around the uh, look around the NCAA. And like just a couple minutes ago, Florida losing to 0-7 Texas Southern by double digits at home. So nothing's a given. So they took care of business, and they deserve that ranking, I think, 100%. And now there's going to be no more games where they have to force themselves to get up and get excited to play you know, a Quadrant 4 opponent. This week, they've got West Virginia on the road, and then they've got uh, St. Bonaventure's neutral site, and then it's Big East play. Now, Huskies are going to be entering those games without Adama Sanogo, abdominal strain or maybe tear, and without Tyrese Martin. Tyrese Martin in the middle of a two to four week absence, left wrist injury, and Sanogo we heard on the College Hoops podcast with John Rostein that Dan Hurley told him Sanogo might be, out, might be back a little bit sooner than expected. He felt better today than he has in days past, and that's a good sign. But even so, without those two guys, they're still executing at a high level against Grambling State. Yeah, it was awesome. And you, Grant, and I we were able to, we were able to broadcast it with Wuss, and we got like a full, we got the a whole view of a whole team effort. I would say everyone was stepping up. RJ Cole didn't have it. We'll talk about him, but RJ Cole didn't have it. They were getting to the line as a team, especially. They didn't turn the ball over that much. I think they had five turnovers by the end of the game, which is incredible compared to the sloppiness from VCU and, and Maryland Eastern Shore. So they cleaned up a lot of things. The defense looked great. Guys stepped up to fill the scoring absences of Sanogo and Martin, so it was a great bounce back performance that they needed going into this tougher week. And it's been talked about the depth of this UConn team is, it's good. They have a top 10 ranked recruiting class, and Jordan Hawkins is starting to really ball out. He had a couple more threes uh, against Grambling on Saturday. We saw Samson Johnson for his first true minutes. A bit unsteady in the first half, but really started to play better in the second half. Had a big dunk and a three-pointer that looked smooth, and Rasul Diggins got some, some actual minutes off the bench. Didn't really see him you know, get involved that much offensively, but Coach Hurley is going to need to rely on these guys because, yes, you ideally want to play your nine-guy rotation and not touch Samson Johnson and Rasul Diggins as needed, but come Big East play, and as the injury bug is hit, you're going to need to rely on those guys. Now, Coach Hurley called upon legendary coach Jim Calhoun, recently retired, to come to practice after the Maryland Eastern Shore game. Coach wasn't necessarily happy with the effort the team put out, the spirit they played with, Plus, he wanted Coach Calhoun to speak some words of encouragement to Tyrese Martin and Adama Sanogo. I love that Coach Hurley is bringing in the legend in Calhoun. Do you, do you agree with me on that? I, I, absolutely. Anything Jim Calhoun, I'm, I'm for. This, this guy built the program to what it is today. Hurley rebuilt it in this most recent stretch, but 99, 04, 11, and yes, Kevin Ollie won in 14, but he won with Jim Calhoun's recruits. So Jim Calhoun's the original carpenter, and... He's seen it all with UConn. So this is Dan Hurley. Dan Hurley hasn't been here that long. So Calhoun's perspective is crucial, and Hurley knows that. And he takes advice and different like bits of information from all, all around uh, at the NCAA. So I loved it. Calhoun, he's been there before. He's There's been rough UConn stretches, even in the years they won the championship. So this is nothing new for Calhoun, and I think his presence alone I think inspired the guys to play a little bit better than a lot better on Saturday against Rambling. Yeah, anytime the GOAT is in the building, you're going to listen to him. And, and I think it speaks volumes to the UConn program that Coach Hurley's comfortable bringing Calhoun in. He's not feeling intimidated or sort of pressured. But he just he said he called him up, wanted him to come in and speak to his guys. And, you know, it proved dividends because the Huskies, 
you know, didn't beat Maryland Eastern Shore by a lot. They won 72-63, but then they bounced back with a resounding 88-59 victory over Grambling. Talk to me about those two games really quickly. So, Maryland Eastern Shore, it, it, they just couldn't, like, f until the end, put them away. And it felt like the fatigue from Atlantis was really evident. They, were, they came out flat. They were, t like, 20-plus point favorites. And middle-of-the-week game in Hartford, which of, I will stand by the fact that they play better here than they do in Hartford. They do. There is no doubt in my mind. I don't know why that is. Well, I know why that is. There's more people, and it's the home gym. Like, Excel is like the home away from home. It's hey, not. Think about it, too. Do you as a student, as a fan, want to drive 35 minutes no. to an Excel center that's 15,000 feet, 15,000 seats and has 8,000 people there against a you know, cupcake opponent? No, no. You said it. Neither do the players, I think. They're never going to say that, but it's got to be tough to get up and get excited to play a game in that cavernous arena against a team that doesn't mean anything to you. With crowds, like, exactly. And with crowds that, like, they don't fill, they don't fill up more seats. Despite XL holding more people, they don't fill up more seats. So that's my XL rant. Never been a fan. But then Grambling State, Saturday here, took care of business. They left no doubt from the beginning. They had, a, they had a cook, they had a cook, lob, lit the crowd on fire, the Hawkins threes. Energy was there throughout. There was no there was no being lethargic there. No, they came out of the gates firing on all cylinders. A cook, a cook got it started. Andre Jackson, a ferocious dunk off a nice feed from Jordan Hawkins. Uh, that's the type of victory that we wanted to see and that we did see. Like you said earlier, balanced scoring attack. Now, I think we're going to agree on this next one. Your weekly MVP. RJ Cole, Cole World. He... His buckets are so valuable because without him, they de they cannot put the ball in the basket. Because he, when he didn't have it against Grambling State, it's more fresh in my mind. I'll go back to the Maryland Eastern Shore game. Didn't have it from the field. It was over seven from three. Couldn't. It was four for fourteen from the field in general. In general, but he got to the line so often. Ten for eleven there. Ninety-one percent for the year, right at the average. And then against Maryland Eastern Shore. In a game that they barely won, they needed all 25 of his points. He shot 80 for 16 from the field, 7 for 7 from the line, so that's 17 for 18 in total, leaving no points at the line. And he's the leader of this team. He does everything. I mean, 4 steals, 7 assists, 5 rebounds against Grambling State, and then only 2 turnovers in those 2 games. He's, we saw the press getting to him a little bit in Atlantis against VCU, but he's not letting go of the ball and letting the other team get transition points. Like, the transition points that UConn on the offensive end pulls away with teams. So it's got to be RJ Cole. Big East honorable mention, I think, or honor roll. Yep. So well-deserved, the leader of this team. There's a reason why he averaged 25 points a game at Howard. I don't care what conference it's in. To score 25 points a game in 40 minutes of play is super impressive. Yeah, and he, after that Maryland Eastern Shore game, had scored 24-plus points in three out of his last four games. Like you said, he's a, he was a volume scorer at Howard. We didn't necessarily see a lot of it last season. He caught a lot of flack for maybe not – playing up to UConn fans' expectation. But this year, he's been lights out. 18 points again Saturday against Grambling. And against a team like West Virginia on the road in a hostile environment, you're going to need him because I don't trust Rasul Diggins yet. No. And Jalen Gaffney hasn't quite proven to me that he's ready to take on the point guard role. So RJ Cole, he's your fifth-year senior. You're going to rely on him. Now that brings me to our preview of the next week. UConn at West Virginia Wednesday night. Big East, Big 12 battle, 7 p.m. ESPN2. Then the Huskies return to New Jersey. The battle, excuse me, the Never Forget Tribute Classic against St. Bonaventures. That's a team who was ranked at one point. That's Saturday, 3.30 p.m. ESPN2. Yeah, I'm excited. The Cupcakes, they it's not, like, it's fun to see blowouts, but this is real college basketball. We're getting into it. Conference play is very much within sights. And, I, of course, we'd love to have everyone healthy, but, of course, with Sonogo and Martin going down, that's just not the case. I'm excited. I really am. West Virginia is a very hostile environment. They've been a powerhouse for a while. Bob Huggins has created an insane program there over the years. They're always in the tournament, always a threat to make a deep run. And this is the first hostile environment that a lot of these guys are going to play in because COVID last year and then a lot of freshmen that cracked the, the, the rotation this year. So it's a big test before conference play where they're going to have to play and hostile environments in the next coming winter months. Now, if you ask me the key for the West Virginia game, I would say they have to shoot the three ball well. Didn't shoot it particularly well against Grambling State and still put up 88 points. Against West Virginia, that's not going to cut it if they don't shoot it well. So I'm looking at guys like Jordan Hawkins, Tyler Pauly, and then secondary guys like RJ Cole. He can't, he can't shoot 0 for 7 from 3. Jalen Gaffney's going to have to hit a few. A cook a cook. 
probably going to have to take a few and maybe make one to two. And even Isaiah Whaley, a guy who we've seen become more confident in his three-point shot, he's going to have to stretch the floor a little bit. The Huskies are going to need to find ways to score the basketball without Adama Sanogo. Now, Saturday, we'll be there as fans. I cannot wait for that environment. I feel like UConn fans are going to flood the Prudential Center. It's going to be a fun environment against the Bonnies. Absolutely. I mean, St. Bonaventure was ranked the whole year, and then due to the heroics of A.J. Green of Northern Iowa, giving them a 35 and 9 threes, they lost their ranking. But they're still a great team. I mean, they have five guys that average in double figures, which is super impressive. And... They're like 8, 9 deep. Like, they're similar to us in a way. I mean, it's not that shocking because Hurley's an A-10 mine. They're from the A-10 conference. Yep. I know it might be a bit of a stretch, but I really don't think it is. So I love that we got these games scheduled. Just going, go, going from Grambling to playing Providence right away would do no one any favors. And God forbid they lose one of these games. It doesn't matter as much as losing to Providence. Obviously, we want to win them. So I'm not saying, oh, I'm not build, building in excuses, but... It's a it's perfect timing. Perfect. They're, they're good opportunities, too. The West Virginia game is going to be a quadrant one game. And then St. Bonaventure's game on a neutral court. That's a game, if you win, it's going to look great on your resume. So you're 8-1, and one, 15th ranked UConn men's basketball team. Two big games this week. We hope you'll tune in. The two of us will certainly be watching extremely closely. And we'll see you next week for another episode of Run It Back.